What's going on guys? I hope you are doing well this afternoon, almost evening. It is uh, 5.22 p.m. Central Standard Time where I'm at. I just wanted to cover the charts. It has been an interesting day today regarding uh, the S&P 500. So I'm here zoomed in on the hourly time frame. Um, you know, I've been saying this, man, pretty much man, since February, since like early February. Um, about this descending broadening wedge pattern here. Um, the bottom aspect of it is getting respected on the local time frames. There has been a bounce here at the uh, 3,835 level. And um, yeah, that would indicate a higher low from this particular area here because this was considered a local low. Um, if we do see continuation, we could... Uh, potentially see this area as a higher low area uh, instance I'm sorry which would then kind of uh, create a pivoting event uh, for the S&P 500 which is very good for overall stocks and such but yeah um, like I had said prior uh, to many videos uh, these descending broadening wedge patterns they break bullish 83% of the time so uh, as you can see right now this particular hourly candle is on the verge of trying to break back above this yellow sloping line which is a historical level in regards to this larger descending broadening wedge pattern so if the daily candle can retake this level and, con and confirm it as support that would be uh, really 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 bullish <laughs> but ultimately um, Realistically, I do expect price to kind of bounce within this uh, zone here, the white lines, to uh, then kind of break out of it, and we can then retest uh, these uh, resistance levels. We do have this red box here where I would expect some uh, issues to pop up in regards to uh, sell-offs, if you will, short-term sell-offs, but ultimately um, I do feel that these, um, well, going back to this particular uh, pattern let me change the color here because it would be considered support tomorrow if it were to continue bullish but anyway <clears throat> these descending broadening wedge patterns here they do break to the top side so my projected uh, breakout price target is 4,800 still so as long as this area gets back tested as support uh, we can expect those prices so the daily candle did close above this line today so we could have just seen this as a fake out and everything that's happening with the banking systems and everything and basically the government saying hey we're going to give you a blank check you know if your bank goes bust or whatever and you, your the depositors need money like that's pretty much kiwi infinity um which is good for overall um crypto assets and as you can see here on the daily chart we are starting to see the volume weighted average price indicator this yellow line point to the upside it wants to cross back above and if we were to go um, to the 12 hour we'd see something similar um, if you go to the six hour we do we did have a buy signal uh, the last uh, candle which is right here since then we've been going to the upside if you go to the three hour um, we are starting to see uh, the money flow is starting to curl back up which is a good sign overall for the S&P 500, which is uh, also a good sign just for crypto assets and tech stocks in general. All right, so I'm going to move on to my favorite chart of today, which is a Bitcoin. Okay, uh, kind of zoomed in here. I'm going to zoom in a little bit more than usual. I'm going to go to the one hour. On the one hour time frame, I did notice this ascending channel here. Um, it recently broke down, so that's not necessarily good for intraday types of things. Because the hourly did confirm, I would consider this pump kind of nullified, not nullified, uh, I would expect, you know, essentially uh, price to kind of, you know, it could literally be bouncing here and then get rejected down, you know, uh, so I'm going to change this color, it's a little bias of a color, <laughs> but uh, overall, yeah, I mean, we did have this triangular pattern. Um, this bull fly kind of pop up but it did hit this top side resistance and the thing about these patterns is when you have three touch points on one side and two touch points on the other in this case we've had one two three touch points on the bottom we had three touch points on the top here so that confirms an ascending channel and these do break out bearish unfortunately so we did have a bullish pattern within this bearish structure but ultimately 
um, it looks like the bears are faring a little bit better right now. So let me turn on my indicators here just to get some better context of what's happening. So uh, a couple of things are popping up as well that's uh, kind of helping me validate my current assumption of what the market's doing. So we've had not one but two bearish engulfing candles. Um, <clears throat> bearish engulfing candle one, bearish engulfing candle two. The second bearish engulfing candle has broken outside of these uh, range patterns here. We do have confirmed resistance right here at 26.481. So that right there goes there. Also, um, we do have an area of uh, potential former resistance acting as support. So let me delete this line right here so you can see it better. See the yellow lines? See the yellow dotted lines right here? See how my indicator works is that the yellow dotted lines are stronger than say the red dotted lines or you know the blue dotted lines over here. Okay, so that's kind of why I'm thinking to myself, huh, this could be a potential area where the uh, bulls try to flip this as support. Now, that's a little too premature of a statement, I'll be completely honest with you. Um, there's more bear signs than there are bullish signs at this time. Um, so let me turn, let me like take off this um, old pattern here. Now, um, we are outside of this ascending channel, and then also the hourly candles are below the 9 and the 21 exponential moving average, and we've had multiple candles confirm that these are trying to get flipped as resistance. So um, I got to take that in consideration, and uh, usually mm, places do like to get retested as support or resistance, so when price broke through this horizontal uh, resistance line, it was never really back tested as uh, support. So realistically speaking, I could I could actually see a time where we come back down to this level to flip 22.5k as former resistance to support. Uh, now also we do have this uh, line right here. I'm going to turn it yellow so you can see it clearly. We do have this yellow line right here as downward sloping support as well. Um, the reason I call it support is because on the hourly, um, let me zoom in real quick here, we broke this line as resistance, okay, a uh, couple hours later we eventually back tested as support, the 9 exponential moving average is held and it continued to rip to the upside. Um, in that process we've had this ascending channel develop and now it seems to have played out you see it's funny because downward sloping channels are actually bullish in, in, in scope as you can see when, you, when, it, when it broke out just ripped to the upside but also these ascending channels are quite the opposite yeah they do are they are bullish in the time being but once they break they do break to the downside so it is a smaller version than this particular version here but uh, yeah this particular um, uh, pattern did play out. I, as I mentioned in previous videos, usually these descending channels, they break back to the previous area to where they uh, began, and that's exactly what happened, and even overperformed a little bit. So that's good to see. Uh, now, same thing with uh, these particular patterns right here. So realistically, uh, this area is where the channel kind of began. You could make an argument that it's like down here. Um, so... I would probably either see um, this area right here. Uh, I want to see bullish divergences develop either here or either here, ultimately to create a higher low. I do feel like everything that's happened in, in regarding price and with um, major news events and stuff and regarding the Fed kind of like ending their potential rate hikes and such, I do see this um, as a turning point in the market, and I do feel that the bottom could already be printed and we're most likely going to be ratcheting up higher lows within the coming year to then um, set up for a huge bull run uh, in 2024 when the Bitcoin halving commences. But yeah, like I had stated before, uh, I do expect maybe like a bounce in this area. Um, this is a little too far-fetched, I'll be completely honest. I'm actually, I don't feel as strong about this particular move right here. Um, but yeah, I would 
I wouldn't feel too worried if price retraced all the way back down to 22.5 at some point. I do see that as still a zone to to keep your eye on, um, to maybe be a dollar cost average into, or you know, uh, kind of if you're currently in a short, maybe that's kind of a place to take your profits. Depending on your circumstance, I don't know exactly what you're thinking. Not financial advice, of course. Um, just uh, probabilities and perspectives. Anywho, I'm gonna look at the one hour. So the one hour money flow is thick in the green. As I said prior, when this money flow goes green, I, uh, well in this case blue for me, um, when this thing just rips blue, it, it, good things happen in terms of price. You know, conversely, you know, once we kind of top out, we start seeing divergences, we kind of like go sideways. And then once we hit the red part, that's when we start, you know, going to the downside. So realistically, if this parabolic move to the upside is over, which I do think it is to some extent, you could realistically see um, we do have a wick high right here and uh, we do have a wick low right here. But we also have the 786 right here. So we do have a potential range. OK, it's kind of large, but it is a range to, to keep in consideration. I would argue that there's a 14% range in which price will be chopping until uh, we reset the uh, momentum oscillators to then pivot to the upside. Now um, we do have a uh, historical, if you if you really zoom out here, this upward sloping um, resistance point. So I would not be surprised if, say, we broke out of this channel, all right, and we just kind of like hit resistance, hit resistance tapped this to then start coming down you know what i mean so don't be surprised if there is another leg to the upside as well so you have to be very very careful um so if you are in a short position i would take this wick top at, uh, if you were to put like a stop loss it would probably be right right above this particular area okay not financial advice but that's just how traditional traders you see local tops local wick tops are usually the t uh, areas to where people put their stop losses so that's exactly why i had stated that but overall um i do feel that um this run is over at the, for the time being uh, we do have support areas right here at the 786 and we also have here the Bollinger Band plying out. But like I said before, I wouldn't feel too comfortable with those particular areas. I'm going to turn off Bollinger Bands. I'm going to turn off the um, uh, the exponential moving average and just keep the, the horizontals. So as you can see, um, you see this bar area right here. I'm going to circle it. You see these two bars, the yellow, the yellow bars and stuff like that right here. That's another main reason why I do feel that this area has been flipped to support because it wasn't just resistance. It was double resistance <laughs> and when it broke, it just completely ripped. So it would be, it would be poetic if you will, to actually see this as a um, future support if price starts to give out. Ultimately, not going to lie, um, on the one hour time frame. We could realistically be seeing like some form of a head and shoulders. I mean, that's kind of a, a stretch. I'll be completely honest with you, but we have a shoulder, we have a head. We could be developing another shoulder, and uh, usually those break to the downside. So, um, yeah, I would keep my eye up on that. That is highly speculative, but that's something I would like to keep um, close to, to my chest so to speak in regards to my research okay so uh in pure fashion we hit the 1743 and we're actually uh we broke we broke through it for a couple hours but then we broke back into it the beauty about this is that we have this descending broadening wedge pattern right here that actually broke to the upside and we've hit the target which is uh this particular area and actually far exceeded it which is a bullish signature so uh, I have to assume that this has now been flipped as support, okay? But it is downward sloping, okay? So the longer price is consolidating here, whoops, the longer price is consolidating here, the lower that it could potentially go, okay? So right now, given that we did confirm a um, resistance area right here, I would need to see more consolidation, uh, to be honest. Now, the money flow is starting to wane ever so slightly. 
Why do I say that? Is because we have a high, then we have a lower high. So it's ever so slight, but you know, keep your eye on the money flow. If it still continues printing lower highs, then I would be concerned here. Um, but uh, for the time being, you can't be bullish. I mean, you can't be bearish seeing this like thick money flow starting to go, um, you know, positive. So that's nice to see. Uh, regarding Ethereum, um, interestingly enough, on the one hour we did backtest this area as a support, this box, because of uh, these these this candle price action right here. Uh, at first, the 786 was acting as resistance, but then ultimately created that um, that lower high that you really want, that that lower high you really covet in upward uh, moving price action. But similar to Bitcoin, there is this. Um, trend you have to keep your eye on uh, just for the sake of uh, protecting your capital all right so um, here it is that boom right there so there is this that I'm keeping notice of um, this upward sloping line <clears throat> there is convergence here at 1,640, so I would not doubt price to eventually test this to either confirm it as support or actually break through it to initiate an even larger move to the downside. So, uh, I, yeah, I would say watch watch out for that particular move. Um, yeah, okay. So actually, I talked about this. We did see a descending channel here. Um, in regards to Solana and what's great about Solana is that it is consistently creating low uh, higher lows and higher highs so we got the low higher low higher low higher low higher low and now with Wix confirmed higher low so that's very good for the asset it is it is an altcoin so it's a little slower than all the others but it's breaking back above the the $20 mark which is super bullish if you ask me if price is going to continue upward it needs to hold 20.085 also um, like I had stated before rising channels when they do break to the upside the target is usually around here and as you notice in the other assets um, they were outperforming so don't whoops don't be surprised if you actually see say a $28 Solana within the coming days but uh, yeah, ultimately I do feel like price will be bouncing within this channel to ultimately um, you know, either consolidate and then break to the upside or consolidate and break to the downside. So that's kind of where I'm keeping my eyes uh, on. But at the end of the day, I do feel more bullish than I do bearish. Uh, anyway, I'm going to leave it at that. I just want to say thank you so much if you're still here. Yeah, if you haven't already, please like, share, and subscribe. And uh, yeah, if uh, you have any questions regarding like particular altcoins, please to uh, feel free to leave any messages in the description area or in the comment section below. <laughs> but anyway, uh, take care. Have a great rest of the evening. Bye-bye.